and The Stranger on the Bridge. You seem as if you're in a really good place now. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's still a uh, you know I have my my relapses. Of if course, I'm honest. You, do. you know, yeah, I... it's a struggle, isn't it? Yeah, you know, any mental constant... illness is a struggle. Yeah, it's it's a constant thing I have to manage. Sure. You know, medication, uh, therapy, mm. and but most importantly, talking. I sit now sure. talking. I I we talk. You know, I, I'm <laughs> able to, I'm able to talk openly now and you know say if I'm struggling and that makes all the difference to it be does. honest. It is amazing to think that. Going back to that place that you were in, you were, you know, in such despair and thought there was no way out, and in this terrible dark place. And if it hadn't been for you just helping, who uh, knows what might happen? Now he's stuck with me every day. I know, because uh, the two of you become course. really good mates. I mean, you're really good pals, and you actually do an awful lot of work for mental health issues, which is brilliant. <laughs> no, were you were you like a teenager when all this happened to you? So yeah, my kind of I suppose story is like it started when I was 17. Right. And I didn't realize that I was anorexic until I was 20, which sounds weird, but I never got a break from my own mind. So I didn't realize what I was doing was like abnormal. Sure. Uh, and I didn't get help until I was 24 because I never felt ill enough. Because mm. all of the stories that I saw were people that weighed less than like a bag of crisps. Of course, people and... really, really emaciated. Exactly. And, but the vast majority of people who have yeah. any sort of eating illness, or, you know, eating disorder, it's not like that. No, completely not. And it affects so many blokes as well. Yeah, well, there's like, like so apparently one anywhere between 10 and 24 percent of anorexics are blokes wow, and people weird. like elton john had bulimia that's so right rocket yeah. man's all about salad and there's like loads of different blokes that have like suffered with it and i think it's it's something like it's not to do with there's a line in the book that eating disorders are not like donald trump they don't you know sort of segregate based on race gender and age it can mm. occur to anyone at any absolutely. time absolutely you talk about your huge ambassador for mental health mm -hmm. and, and and having been away for the four years doing all yeah. of these films i'm sure the people still want to talk to you about what you did on screen. I mean, yeah. the, the documentary about suicide was just hugely powerful. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult when people still want to talk about it to you, it's I guess. It's really difficult. So, like, the other day, you I can't was give just, them the answers. I was just walking my dog, and someone said thank you for making the film, which is, you know, it's, it's bittersweet because the only reason people say thank you for making the film is because they've in some way been affected by it. It's difficult, but all I can do in that situation is just try and point people in the right direction, mm -hmm. which is, I suppose, a lesson for everyone watching. It is. You know, and you can't help everyone. Which was about, yeah, wasn't it? It's exactly. really just pointing people in the right direction. And that you're not alone. You find help. Yeah. yeah. You kind of kept it all in, though. It's got to come out at some point. So yeah. you did have a breakdown. I did. And it's hardly surprising. Yeah. Hardly surprising that that happened. Yeah, it was. And of course, right because of the job that you do, <laughs> it's all in the public eye, and that's even more difficult to deal with, isn't that's it? That's it. Yeah. No, I totally had a breakdown. And and unfortunately, I, because I was just spiraling out of control and I was making mistakes yeah. and things I really regret because I wasn't in my right frame of mind. But, you know, so I kind of understand that that will get a backlash and people will kind of think, what on earth's going on? But you kind mm. of don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. and Nobody knows. No, exactly. And it's all about, you know, just walking somebody else's shoes for a little <laughs> while and then, then you'll know. Your husband has been... You rock, of course he has. Because yes. you've had some... You, you wouldn't think it looking at you, but, you know, things like feeling low and depression and all of that can hit absolutely anyone. We're going to be talking to Joe about that later. Mm. Um, but, you, you know, you had some down times and he's always been there to, to pick you up, hasn't he? Oh, he's been incredible. He was actually... I met him six months after I got, of, got out of hospital. Right. And um, he has been my rock. And even before that, my family and my doctor mm. and all the nurses at Capio Nightingale in London were phenomenal. Mm. I had, um, it's just something that just came completely out of the blue, an acute psychotic breakdown. Never had anything like that mm. before. And, um, it, you know, I'm just so grateful that I was able to recover. I mean, to be honest, because I didn't know much about it, I never thought you could recover from something like that. Mm. So to have had the people around me that helped um, mm. was like just magical. Something that so many people suffer with, like you get anxious and you get worried and you, you've got your ways of dealing with that. But I think people looking at you from the outside, looking in, would think, how can she be ang you know, how can she be anxious? But it can happen to absolutely anybody, can Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem really with can. mental health disorders and uh, panic attacks, panic disorder, is that you become really good at faking it. You become yeah. really good at lying, and uh, essentially. And, and I think that's... And, and being a parent makes you really good at that because you want to be strong for your kids. And, yeah. like, 
like, 90% of being a parent is not telling the truth, and they don't know that yet. <laughs> it's like, I'm forever making out, like, I'm, I've got it all together, yeah, yeah. and I know exactly what I'm doing. And the truth is, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I don't think anyone has, no, exactly. to be honest with you. And I think we need to be more honest and yeah. speak about it and say, do you know what, I might look like I know what I'm doing, mm. but I haven't got a clue. And, and I think that's where we need to talk about it more, and mm. I think that's, it's really important. And, and I do suffer, and I, I only had a panic attack maybe five weeks ago, mm. and I was in bed for, like, three days, and the kids... Sometimes it's easy just to lock the door and say, mm. but the kids know, and it's hard. It's really yeah, hard sometimes. Step by step. Is that how you think of it when you go on your travels? Just put one foot in front of the other and hopefully it's all going to work out? Well, that, I think it's a motto for life, really. <laughs> it probably is, yeah. But it was, it's actually advice I was given by um, a lady in the job centre when I went to sign on, when I was flunked out of school, Jeez. and I was in a really, really bad way, and I didn't know what I was going to do in life, and I sort of hit rock bottom and come a whisker from ending it all, to be honest. And I, I, I went into the job centre to sign on. My brother persuaded me to go. And there was a lady in there who said, you know, don't try and have a five-year plan or aim for the stars or any of this tosh that people are told so often. Just, yeah, yeah. just try and take it day by day, take it step by step. step that by was step. the advice. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. And it really worked. It really <laughs> it did. It really worked for me because yeah, doing anything was a bit of an achievement. You know, mm. getting out of bed in the morning wow. and getting to the news agents to get a paper to look through the small lads. That was, that was success for me. From the outside looking in, everything looks great. Yeah. There you are, because you are a very upbeat person. You're put, you know, you're putting that out there anyway. Yeah. You know, we've seen you acting, we've seen you with your dad, we've seen you doing all these amazing things, and everybody on the outside would think, he's got the absolute life, of, you know, yeah. the life of Rhino, as they say. I think I am... Um, I mean, I developed humour as a defence mechanism when I was very young. Right. You know, like, at school, I'd be like, hey, kid that's going to make fun of me and beat me up. If I make a joke about me first, then it takes the power out of it and, and you can't. Mm -hmm. And I, they still made fun of me and beat me up, but now I'm on the telly and they're selling carpets out of a van. So. Exactly. There is that. There is always that, which is very good. That's the best therapy I would ever Again, think. You know? Yeah, no, no absolutely. Yes. You look amazing. You keep yourself fit. You work hard, not just physically, though. Mentally, you keep yourself fit too, which I think is a great thing to do. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think um, being mentally aware of you know your your well-being psychologically is important yeah. and um, we, all, we all carry baggage around with us men definitely carry it way deeper than women mm, most yes. of the time I and think you're right we're not good at talking about it and, and um, opening up but uh, yeah no I was we were talking about therapy you know and how yeah. important it is you know and if you can have it to, to have it because it's uh, Sometimes you forget what you're carrying around on a daily basis and it stores itself and yeah. builds up, you know, and it can, it can manifest itself in many negative ways. So yeah. better to talk about it and get it out and not be ashamed of it. Ten years ago, you were struggling, mm. weren't you? You were really, really struggling. You were, you were in a bad, bad place. I really was. I really was indeed. Uh, ten years ago, um, I suffered very desperately with depression, very dark thoughts, and I was very isolated, and I, set, I, I did isolate myself from, from most of my friends. I came very, very close to taking my own life, and Gosh, it's... Nice. Uh, yeah, it's a very... It was, and it was around Christmas time as well, as on the 23rd of December, 2009, yeah. What brought you back? <sighs> Weirdly, I've talked about this a lot, um, I was literally on a balcony's edge uh, with my Jeez. foot up, and that was the situation I found myself in. After numerous different discussions with myself internally in Spain about how to do this, mm. um, I, was, I sent myself away to try and have a make-or-break holiday for myself, and, and it went terribly bad. I found whiskey was uh, the only option, and then I oh, no. found myself on that ledge. But for some reason, the element of control and the, 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 the feeling that gave me, the energy that gave me, took me off that edge. And, and I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that moment, for whatever that moment was. It was like a, it, it was like a turning point. It was really was a turning point. That, I think that's the beginning of my life in many ways. I mean, you've described before that you can you can feel absolutely fine and you don't necessarily link it to depression or anything mm. else. You say that you feel you go from zero to 100 mm. in moments where suddenly you're overcome with these suicidal thoughts. Yes, and it just all, oh, the past just comes and gets you when you don't realise it's going to come. It just catches up. Uh-huh. And when energy. you say when you say past, I mean we, we, we do obviously we're linking this to you had a a, a tough mm. upbringing really. You had a very abusive father. Yes. You you saw some awful things at home with with abuse towards your mum and indeed yes. your your brother who who sadly took his own life because yes. it was too much for him. Mm. Um, so where are you at now? Do you mean how how do you feel? Have you processed all of the, the, the awful stuff that did happen and here we are in this new chapter of your life? Is that how you see it? I feel like I'm only just starting to accept that I have to process it 
because you go through fronting it and just fronting a smile, pretending and just continuing as though nothing has happened. So I think now I'm just trying to channel the energy out of my body rather than circulating it within myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes, I mean, as you say, you know, you, 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 you feel better physically, but I actually do come out, it's like I've had a spring clean in my head. Yeah. You know, it's like being I, reset. But the anxiety in the menopause is, is one of the things we don't talk about much. We talk about the hot flushes and the night sweats and all that's very inconvenient. But the anxiety and the depression that comes with it sometimes, people don't understand so much because mm. they don't talk about it, and I'm delighted that you are. Oh, because it happens to everyone, and I don't think anybody should feel, you know, ashamed in any no, way of course sometimes, because I know sometimes I feel completely overwhelmed. What? And better now, because as you know, I've got mm. HRT, mm. and I swear by it, I know it's not for everybody, but for me it's great. But even if you get put on that, you've still got to monitor yourself, because sometimes of you course. need... Doses changes a little bit. And people will be amazed to hear you say that you felt this anxiety and you okay. sometimes felt overwhelmed. Because mm. people see you successful, superstar, confident, <laughs> full, you know, self-esteem. <laughs> and, and we know that all of us, we're all human, totally. and sometimes it, 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 bec it can become overwhelming. Absolutely. And you, you, you put... Everything gets blown out of all proportion. You worry about things that are never going to happen. Uh, and worrying about it is much worse than the actual event when it, when it comes around. Anyway. So this is universal. This is yeah. common to all of us.